change is a sure thing. No one can resist the change that will happen. Change takes place in all lines of human life without exception. Today, changes in the business world take place very quickly, especially since the COVID-19 pandemic has triggered rapid technological developments and has changed business concept in almost all industries. Responding to these challenges, IMAPS FEB UMY prepares its graduates to have qualified managerial skills and be able to adopt to all changes ranging from a national scale to an international scale. In addition, IMAPS FEB UMY graduates will also be equipped with entrepreneurial skills where later IMAPS FEB UMY alumni will not only be able to meet the needs of employment opportunities but also open new jobs. This is in accordance with UMY vision to become the leading entrepreneur university in 2030, entrepreneurial university in 2035, and become sociopreneurial university in 2040. Welcome to International Program of Management and Business, IMAPS FEB UMY. This international program was established in 2016. IMAPS FEB UMY was established under the Management Study Program, Faculty of Economics and Business, Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta, an excellent and Islamic campus. Until now, our study program has received superior accreditation from Ban PT and has been certified by the Asian University Network Quality Assurance. International Program of Management and Business, Faculty of Economics, Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta, is a leading management business program in Indonesia. The program has a curriculum and the education process which to create, to produce graduates which is competitive not only nationally but also internationally. The program gives the opportunity for students to have the exchange students to many countries that they want, Malaysia, Thailand, Taiwan, South Korea, Japan, Turkey, Spain, and other European countries that the student likes. This gives the student with international, international exposure and that will give the competitive advantage for the student so that they are very competitive when they graduate. The graduate of this program has got a job in many areas, in multinational companies, government agencies, and also as entrepreneurs. I really encourage you to join this program for your bright features. Good luck. The aim of the International Program of Management and Business is to provide managerial competence and technology-based entrepreneurship at an international level. To achieve this goal, IMAPS FEB UMG is committed to becoming the center of excellence in management by practicing the five values in IMAPS, namely, I. Innovative, focus on talent and competence development, which provides flexibility to innovate fast. Mature, create a learning environment, which consists of practical and hands-on content. Adaptive, equip the student with proper knowledge in achieving the associated result from the disruptive change. Balance, generate a well-defined capability to integrate soft skill and hard skill competence. Synergy. Minimize the gap between what academic over and what industry needs by continuously interacting with industry. Our vision is to become a reputable undergraduate program in Southwest Asia in 2025 in the field of management and entrepreneurship based on faith, devotion, science, and technology. In order to create graduates with a global perspective, IMAPS FEB UMY has also collaborated with various universities from several countries such as New Zealand, Australia, UK, China, Japan, Malaysia, Spain, Taiwan, Thailand, and Turkey. IMAPS FEB UMY has several excellence programs such as First, English Incentive Course The purpose of the English course is to improve the student's English language skill, especially to improve the student's TOEFL score. 
This course is given to students semester 1 to semester 4. In order to ensure the quality of English language learning, IMAPS already has MOU with a credible English language education institution. Second, Overseas Fieldwork Lecture KKL Abroad and carry out by cooperating with industry partner abroad. Through this program, students will be invited to visit and watch the company's business process. Third, Internship Overseas to increase students' ability, IMAPS has also developed internship program with various companies abroad. All of these activities are designed to produce excellent individuals with hard skill and soft skill who can compete on international level. Fourth, student exchange. IMAPS students will have the opportunity to carry out credit transfer or student exchange programs to several universities that have collaborated with IMAPS FAB UMBA from various countries such as Malaysia, Thailand, Taiwan, China, Korea, Turkey, and Spain. In addition, IMAPS has also accepted several students from Congo, Gambia, Palestine, and United Arab Emirates as full-time students at IMAPS. Fifth, International Conference Delegation. Sixth, Foreign and Domestic Lecturer Guest Lecture. Another activity conducted at IMAPS is to invite visiting professors from various countries. IMAPS also invites practitioners from various fields to provide provision for both hard skill and soft skill for IMAPS students. Another program launched by IMAPS is the summer school, which offer a variety of course that not only study about the material but also directly practice with practitioner. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain amma ba'du. Welcome to the International Program of Management and Business, Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. This program is part of Management Department, Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. The vision for this program is to educate, to empower, and to enrich students with the international network based on Islamic and local wisdom. In order to implement those vision, we are doing several activities such as doing a visiting professor, summer school, student exchange, and also internship overseas. Those activities will be helpful for students to combine their ability to combine their hard skill and also soft skill. So, by joining IMAPS, you will be able to combine your hard skill and soft skill. So, please come and see and join IMAPS. Thank you. Bilahi Taufiq Wajah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Supported by professional lecturers and have a scientific capacity, it is up to date in accordance with the current development of the industry. So, it's no wonder there are so many achievements that IMAP students get in the national or international regional level. IMAP students are prepared to become graduates who are excellent in the fields of managership and entrepreneurship to see existing business opportunities. IMAP's OMA, the center of excellence in management. Alright, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Okay, Great first of all Alright, Mr. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, my... yeah Okay Okay, first of all, I hope that all of the participants could um, open the camera so we can see everyone attend here. Okay, thank you. Mute. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon. Oi, good afternoon, Pak Tofik. Good afternoon, Pak. Good afternoon. Eh, good morning, yeah, in Spain, yeah. <laughs> wow, sorry, sorry. Uh -oh. <laughs> Our moderator today, Dr. Oi, uh, he's from uh, he's from Spain. Oh, okay, I understand. Uh, he study in Spain. 
How's I'm it? from Malaysia. Yeah, from Malaysia. How's the how's, how's situation in Malaysia at, at the moment? Everything uh, back to normal? Not yet. Uh, we are opening the border in the next few days, the 1st of April. That means that we can travel out from the countries. Uh, but the COVID-19 is still quite serious at around 20 to 30k of the cases per day. Per day? Yeah, per day. Oh. <laughs> 20 oh, to 30,000 oh. per day. <laughs> In Indonesia, currently it's only three, three thousand, three k only. Mm-hmm. 3, we are almost ten times, uh, ten times than Indonesia yeah. <laughs> the cases. And I don't know the problem. Maybe uh, people in Indonesia they don't want to get <laughs> tracing, they don't want to get test. So, <laughs> so just uh, they they think that this is is like a common influenza. <laughs> oh, okay, answer, answer. How about in Spain, Mas Stovik? situation at the moment is already uh, everything is free uh yeah basically in spain that people uh not wear the max but uh yeah the condition i think is a little bit high but uh the government of spain uh <coughs> lift up the mandatory of the max uh on on june last years and okay. so uh, but only, uh, but uh, we still have the mandatory in uh, using the max in uh, public transportation. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it's similar like UK. UK also have the similar uh, similar uh, uh, regulation. So they they taught us, they taught me that uh, they will free everything start from next month, April. But yeah, they still keep. They have to use uh, mass in the public transport and so on and so on. Yeah, it's the same. <laughs> okay, uh, I think it's already a fifty-nine participant. Maybe uh, we can start our meeting today. So Sabrina, uh, you can start uh, this meeting. Okay, thank you, Mr. Radian. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good afternoon and good morning for everyone. My name is Sabrina Zata Shiva. It's a precious chance for me to be your master of ceremony in this very special occasion, the guest lecture of financial management. First of all, let's recite our gratefulness to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, who has given us His grace in the form of guidance, happiness, healthy, and mercy, so we can attend and participate in this special event without any obstacles. Salawat and salam upon our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who had brought us from the path of the darkness to the path of the light. I also would like to welcome Mr. Oikong Luang, CIA, AII, PhD, the lecturer of Segi University and Colleges, Malaysia, and our moderator for today, Mr. Taufik Akbar, SAMBA. Um, on this special occasion, we have several agenda as follows. The first one is opening and then material about the emergence of cryptocurrency in the era of digital business. And then we have the discussion that will be guided by Mr. Taufik Akbar. And then the last one is closing. Well, first, let's begin this event by reciting Basmala. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Move on to the next agenda is the main topic that will be delivered by our speaker, Mr. Oi Kongwang. So the time is yours, sir. So is it okay I start my uh, lecture right now? Yes, sir. It's your time right now. Okay, so I can share the screen. Can I see the screen? Yeah, yes. it's, yeah the screen it's is already. Okay, sure. Uh, so without further ado, I will start the uh, lectures today. So our today's topic is about the emergence of cryptocurrency in the era of digital business. So my name is uh, Dr. Uyin Kok Leung. I'm also a CIA, a Certified Internal Auditor, a member of the uh, United States Internal Auditors Institute. I got my PhD. Uh, I'm currently at the Segi University, Malaysia. Uh, this is about some of the information about me. So you can see the handsome guy at the left hand side. Oh, this is as me. And then I'm currently working in the Sagi University as a lecturer for the postgraduate students. That means for the master and the PhD, and also for the doctorates in the business admins. 
I used to work in the KPMG Malaysia as one of the big four firms in the world as a board advisor as also as consultants. Uh, for, for my education, I actually graduated from the US ranking 145 or 147. I got my, my Master of Arts in Finance there and also got my uh, PhD in Finance from the University of Science Malaysia. For qualification and membership, I'm also the member of the Institute of Internal Auditor, a member, life member of the Malaysian Economy Association, Malaysian Finance Association, and then for the echo, echo the Academy Editorial, and I'm also an editor of the Agnes Journal Economy and Business. Uh, I think you guys may be very familiar, the university is actually located very near to the UMW. So uh, thanks again for having me to give this talk today. And I also will become the keynote speaker for one of the international conferences uh, held by the U university in the India. I'm also the reviewer for the few Scopus Index Journals. Uh, for example, the Journal of Economic Study uh, in the Emirates Publisher, Journal of Contemporary Eastern Asians, uh, the regions from the Sesh Publisher, and also the panel for the 14th Asian Academy of Malay, uh, Malay Management International Conference. And then for other consulting and industry collaborations, I'm actually acting as an audit panel for the Malaysian uh, Ministry of Finance to help them to assess the small and medium sized enterprise to award the government loans and government grants. I'm also the Chief Professor for the Malaysia China Higher Education Association. I'm also the lead research fellow for the Central Private Equity of having more than 200 million capitals in Ranked Malaysia. So that's a little bit about me. So uh, for some of the recent publications, uh, these some of my recent publication as a first author in uh, 2021 and 2022, all in the Scopus Index and also in the ECSI, some of they are in the ISI or uh, Social Science Citizen Index. And for the today topic, so uh, we are going to the main topic today, which is the emergence of cryptocurrency in the era of digital business. So which one do you really prefer? Do you prefer the left hand side? side the cryptocurrency or the right hand side we call it as a fiat currency that means it's a physical money so uh, let me give some of the history of the cryptocurrency for example one of the very famous cryptocurrency is actually bitcoin bitcoin was created from the turn oil of the 2008 uh, great Re recession after the subprime crisis, which one, which is the failures of the Lehman Brothers. So after the 20, 2008 of, of the subprime crisis, the cryptocurrency was uh, started to bounce. On the 4th of the January 28, one of the domain they put in, inside the internet coins as a Bitcoin.org was registered. And then an individual or group of people, they named it as a Satoshi Nakamoto, or issued a white paper saying that uh, government shouldn't centralize to control the money. Instead, government should decentralize the money. So this is how Bitcoin is being created. So the person then, the Satoshi Nako, Nakamoto, uh, whether it is an individual or it is from a group of people who created the Bitcoin is still a myth. Uh, nobody really knows who actually created it. But the Bitcoin is actually a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer electronic exchange. It, it means that it allows us to send the money directly from one to another without going through a bank or the third party. However, when the launch of the Bitcoin, it was not that accepted by many people because it was too new in the markets and it took almost more than a year for the first economy transaction to take place. When it, it was happened, when there is a Florida man and negotiates to have a two Papa John pizza, I'm not sure whether this one is available in the Indonesia, but it's also available in Malaysia. So the person uh, asked the Papa John's pizza to, to offer him to have a 10,000 Bitcoin, which value at the 25 ringgits uh, in the 2010. So the Papa John pizza accepted. So this was the first economy transactions that take place. So in the beginning, the cryptocurrency was created after the 20x subprime crisis because a lot of people, they want to have the decentralized control of the money. They don't want the bank to control their money. They also, they also don't believe that the bank has a capability to help them to manage their money due to the failure of the Lehman Brothers in the subprime crisis in 2008. So this is how cryptocurrency is being born. So just now we take the example of the fiat money, also the cryptocurrency. 
the fiat money is actually is like our physical money. So it is a physical millions of exchange. Well, the cryptocurrency is actually the digital million of exchange. Physical money means that it's a dollar in sense that you are holding it. Well, the digital mediums, it means that it's not physical, that you cannot touch it. Well, you only can see inside your phone, inside your laptop, inside your computer. So this is called the digital mediums. So the fiat money, like our own current the paper money, our coins, is actually represented by the bills and coins. Well, the cryptocurrency is represented by the one private and one public piece of gold. That means that if you are having a cryptocurrency, you, your money is actually being uh, stored inside your phone. So for the fiat money, it is unlimited supply. Then government can control it. Then your government can control how much money they want to issue. Or for example, maybe the, uh, inside the Indonesia government, they may want to have more money in the market. So the government brings the money so they have unlimited supply. We are the cryptocurrency. Each cryptocurrency has a set limit, set maximum. It is a very limited supply. For example, the the market only allow for one hundred million of the Bitcoin. So it means that they cannot produce more than that. So the fiat money is issued by governments, where the cryptocurrency is generated by the computer itself. The fiat money is actually the centralized control and issued by the law and banks. Well, the cryptocurrency is decentralized. It's not controlled by any of the governments and also not by any entity. The value of the fiat money is actually determined by the markets and regulations. For example, today you see that oh, maybe uh, one ringgit in Malaysia can get around 0 0.3 US dollar. So if the market is do, doing good, so uh, maybe you one dollar, well, sorry, one ringgit Malaysia can get a 0 0.5 cents a USD tomorrow. Well, the cryptocurrency is actually determined by the supply and demand. So it's not related to the markets and also not related to the regulations. So these uh, differences between the fiat money and also the cryptocurrency. So there are quite a lot of types of cryptocurrency. The first type of the cryptocurrency is the most famous one, which is the Bitcoin. So after that, they got a very famous one, also called the Litecoin, the Ethereum. These are all quite famous one. But the most famous one is still the Bitcoin and the Dogecoin. The Dogecoin is uh, rationally famous due to the Elon Musk, uh, the Tesla motor in the United States uh, as the richest man in the world who supported the Dogecoin. This, that's why they make this uh, Dogecoin become famous in the world right now. But the biggest one is still the Bitcoin. Bitcoin is still dominating the cryptocurrency. So I will explain later in the case study. So which country they actually use the most cryptocurrency? So there was actually a research conducted in the 2021. They call it as the chain analysis of the 2021 Global Crypto Adoption Index. So in this study, they actually measures how many countries, how the countries they produce and they use the Bitcoins. So the top one is the Vietnam, which is quite big. So the skill is from zero to one. Zero is like the country is not using it at all. So one is like the country is using it a lot. So you'll be surprised that Vietnam is actually using a lot of the cryptocurrency, then followed by the Indians and Pakistan. And then of those, uh, Bitcoin was created by the United States, but the usage of the Bitcoin in the United States is still not very well accepted. So it's only called 0 0.22, but it's still at top 10. Where those other uh, many Asian countries here, you see the Thailand here, China, and then Philippines. Uh, however, China started to ban the cryptocurrency in 2021. Later, I will explain on this. Uh, so the right hand side, the one is the for the uh, world map types of the use of the cryptocurrency in 2021. So you can see that uh, Vietnam is actually scored very high. And it is the uh, only country that score above 0 0.4, then followed by the Indians and followed by the Pakistan. So how cryptocurrency actually perform? Why do we need a cryptocurrency? Maybe we take a look at the stock market performance first. Uh, in the year of 2020, it was the arrival of the COVID-19. So I think that everyone knows this. So the market was performing quite, quite terrible. For the Jakarta Composite Index for the 2020, it was the negative 15%. Uh, for Malaysian market, it's also negative. Uh, for the United States Dow Jones, Nasdaq average, and the Nasdaq 
they are performing quite well. It means that the these two market in the United States there is already recover from COVID nineteen. Then for the twenty twenty one, Jakarta also have a very good improvement of the ten point zero eight percent of the positive market returns. Uh, and then the Dow Jones and Nasdaq as a US markets, they are also performing quite well. Then how about the cryptocurrency? So the highlight extracted yesterday. So you can see that the accumulated returns for the past three years for the cryptocurrency for this Bitcoin is actually 47.7%. It means that it's quite high compared to the other stock markets. So during the COVID-19 arrival, yes, you can see there's a slight slump there. It means uh, the decrease in the returns in the price of the Bitcoin. But after that, due to the COVID-19, a lot of people, they prefer to use the digital currency. So that's why you can see the price that increase a lot. So now it currently reached this, this level. So one Bitcoin is actually equal to 47,000 plus uh, USD. So the Bitcoin, the returns is actually quite high compared to the stock market. And then it does not as volatile as the stock market due to the many issues. So now we're back to the today core value, the use of cryptocurrency in digital business, how we actually use the cryptocurrency. So how we how the cryptocurrency actually work. For example, if today you are the left hand side, the guy, you are taking the buying some uh, fast food, let's say you want to buy a burger, a snack for McDonald's, and then McDonald's may want to offer you the food. So instead of using the traditional money, the guy actually can pay through the Bitcoin. So for this, I have uh, prepared a small videos so you can have a look at how Bitcoin actually works through the transaction. How Bitcoin is being passed to the to the McDonald's and then how McDonald's can actually pass the food to the person. Uh, sorry, sir. Do the video has yes. any sound? Because there's no sound, I think. Oh, or... you can't hear the sound, is it? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll play the video I explained to you. So, uh, actually, Bitcoin is started uh, from, the, from in 2008 due to the supply crisis. So, actually, there are many types. Uh, compared to the traditional money, you can see the traditional paper money there. Uh, some people they go you they use the metal. Uh, last time they used the gold and then uh also the bank. So the cryptocurrency that actually didn't go through all these methods. It actually used the so-called technology as a blockchain. It is based on a decentralized technology. So what it means by the blockchain? Blockchain is uh for for example, if you are in a transaction, if you want a bicycle, you actually can purchase it through the Bitcoin itself. So you will have a one private key in your phone. So whenever you want to transfer your Bitcoin to other people, so we, you, you just key in, you, you, you will get the key, the private key from the Bitcoin platform. So they will provide this private key and then you need to, sorry, you need to provide this uh, private key. You need to provide this uh, private key to the, to the seller. So you can see. If you provided the key, 
to the seller. So the, the seller will receive the key. So they will go through the cloud computing and the Bitcoin technology. Sorry, it's a blockchain technology. So it doesn't go through the bank. So the bank does not know that who actually control the money. So they only based on the private key they being given in the Bitcoin. So they deducted online and then they pass to the person. This is a traditional they go through the bank. So if they don't go through the bank, they can go through the Bitcoin. So you can see that there actually is a decentralized. So if you see carefully, so if they go through the bank, for example, you are the purchaser, you need to go through the, your bank and then you need to go through the seller bank and then you need to go through the seller account. So you got a four step here. Well, if you are going through the Bitcoin itself, if you remove the bank, it's only involved two steps. It means that from the, from the buyer, the key, the private key provided by the buyer, and then you pass to the seller the private key. So the money will get transferred without going through the bank. So this is how Bitcoin actually works, how cryptocurrency actually works when it comes to a business transaction. So it's a, a faster mode and it's a decentralized and using the blockchain technology. You can see how the blockchain is inside the blockchain. How, why they call it a blockchain? Because each block consists of very different transaction for example is today i'm mining the mcdonald here so this will be my blockchain so if i'm buying the capsi letter or buying a pizza letter so this will be my second transaction my third transactions uh blockchain so it actually makes the transaction faster so bitcoin and all these cryptocurrency the advantage compared to the traditional fiat money is that it doesn't go through the bank and it is is a faster way of payment So if everyone are having the different blocks, so we call it as a blockchain and we use a decentralized technology. So due to a different private key, so it actually makes the transaction faster than traditional purchase. So you no need to take your own money, your paper money from your pockets and you need to go to a grocery to buy some meal, buy some meat. However, the, the cryptocurrency actually based on the technology we call it as a mining. So this one is a mining. So uh, instead of being issued by the central bank itself, the cryptocurrency is being through the mining technology. It means that you need to use a computer, you need to run the software in order to get the Bitcoin. So however, this is not cheap because uh, the process of getting a Bitcoin through the mining is require a lot of the energy, a lot of electricity. So the electricity will be the cost of, uh, of the Bitcoin already. So Bitcoin is not free at the all. So if you want to get a cryptocurrency, you need to go through a mining process. So if compared to today, there are already uh, 21 million Bitcoin uh, will be issues. Uh, if we can sustain uh, up to uh, 2,140 years, uh, now is uh, 2022, so uh, in the years of 2140, in the estimate that we will utilize the Bitcoin as a cryptocurrency. So what are the benefits of for the business of using the cryptocurrency? So just now you have seen uh, how the cryptocurrency, the transaction is being performed. So what are the benefits for the business? So the first thing is to reduce your cost associated with the accepting customer payments. So like Jutta is showing that the Bitcoin doesn't go through the bank like the traditional money and doesn't, doesn't work like your bank account. Uh, in, in Malaysia, some we are very famous of using the online internet banking. So we just go through our bank account in the online and we can make our transaction. However, when you are using the Bitcoin, because it doesn't go through the bank, so there's no transaction cost. So it's actually, the cost is also lower. There's a almost 0% fees for any transactions. And then there's no restrictions on the payment. So it means that, uh, for example, if you want to buy a car or maybe you want to buy a house, you know, if you go through a bank, the bank may ask you, you know, you cannot transfer so much. You need to transfer one time and one time. Or maybe the bank will ask you to show a lot of documents to prove the transaction. However, if you are going through the cryptocurrency, there's no such restrictions on the payments you won't be asked by the Bitcoin or any types of the cryptocurrency why you want to use this money. So you have your own freedom, you have your own control to control your own Bitcoin. The other benefit is also help you to grow your business by attracting new customers. 
this because some of the customer in today's world, a lot of people, they don't prefer the paper money, they don't prefer the coin, even in the Malaysia and especially in China, a lot of people, they are using digital money. So if you are running a digital business, so it's, it's going to attract a lot of people, they don't like to bring cash to go out. Uh, in China, if you have been to China, they are using the so-called WeChat wallets, uh, Alibaba wallets, so that they don't bring cash, they don't bring coin to go out to buy anything. Even you want to buy a small thing, you want to buy a one dollar candy, it also can be purchased through the digital money. So cryptocurrency actually provide an alternative, another types of choice other than the paper money and the coin. So it actually help to attract new customers. So the last benefit of the cryptocurrency is also it doesn't go through intermediary uh, and third party such as the bank. So the, the payment is, is very instant. Like just now I'm showing you the bank there. If you go through the bank, you have uh, four steps to go through. You need to go through your own bank and then you need to go through the seller bank. But however, if you go through the cryptocurrency, you only need to go through your own private key and then the seller private key. So that's just very simple and very straightforward. And then the payment can be instant in seconds. So this is a benefit. If you are going through your know, online transfer, you need to key in your password, you need to go through the bank, and then we need to wait for the bank to approve the payments, it's going to take some time. But if going through the cryptocurrency, then the payment is the instant. So these are the benefits of having a cryptocurrency in the digital business. However, the cryptocurrency also has some of the disadvantages. Uh, for example, the cryptocurrency is very volatile. The price fluctuation is very huge. For example, uh, it's also very unstable for the business. For example, today the one dollar one Bitcoin, for example, I take this example. For example, one Bitcoin can equal to the one dollar for today. So tomorrow it can become a two dollar. Just imagine that uh today you need to spend one Bitcoin to buy uh let's say uh what are the traditional food in the Indonesia? For example, if you want to buy a flower one today is a one one dollar for having the one Bitcoin to buy a one flower. Maybe tomorrow you need to spend two Bitcoin. So just imagine today you just spend one dollar, you can get the flower. And then tomorrow you need to spend two Bitcoin just to get the flower. So the price fluctuations for the cryptocurrency is very volatile, unlike the paper money. Our paper money and our coin, the value is uh, fixed, it's just more move together with the inflation itself and the money supply and then you know our governments in this world no governments are printing money for every year right? so it's considered a lot stable than a cryptocurrency and also cryptocurrency is also has to be used for the speculating trading as i show you just now the graph there why there's uh, some up and down up and down because uh some people that treat the cryptocurrency as a kind of investment they don't treat it as a uh, currency they don't treat as money so they do is for the investment purpose for example maybe they they buy at the lower price and then when they want to sell off at higher price so when this kind of the speculating trading that exists in the markets it actually can move the bitcoin price up and down very frequent so it's very unstable so the second disadvantages for cryptocurrency is for the cyber security risk and also it can harm the privacy issue for all the users Let's take an uh, example today. If you are using the paper money or the coin money, you know, you go and buy anything, you just take up your wallets and then you take your paper money and it allows you to have the flower. Right? You, 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 don't, you don't need to go through a lot of things. But if with the cryptocurrency, you only you need to bring your phone. For example, if you are taking your phone, if your phone are being hacked, you know, if the platform is being hacked, then your Bitcoin or your cryptocurrency in your phone can be gone. So it can be a very disadvantage for the any business. So the third disadvantage will be the not widely accepted for most business, be it because the cryptocurrency is still considered very new in the markets, although it exists for more than 10 years already. But the fiat money, the paper money and coin money are still the mainstreams. We are still using a lot of the paper money, unlike in China. However, in 2021, the China government, they actually started to ban the cryptocurrency because the China government believes that if the cryptocurrency is not being controlled, it's not being manipulated, it's not being under the management of the governments, 
nobody can control their country money. So the China, they actually banned the crypto coins in 2021, just uh, half years ago. And there are also some reasons that why cryptocurrencies are not accepted for most reasons. For example, there are some illegal use for the money laundering and then illegal use for the money game and the Ponzi scam. I'm not sure the situation in the Indonesia, but uh, it actually happened quite frequently in Malaysia. There are a lot of the money game or we call it as a Ponzi scam. Uh, they try to lure the you know elder people, a rich people to join their so-called a fixed return profile. So every time you put the money there, they will guarantee you a fixed return, a higher than market percentage. So Bitcoin are a very frequent choose for using all these money laundering and the Ponzi scam cheap people money in Malaysia. So in recent years, our Malaysia is also moving like China already. So we are our government are not going to recognize the cryptocurrency as well. So that's why in a lot of business, they are not accepting the cryptocurrency. There is a very main important and very dis disadvantageous. And this is because the cryptocurrency is also very volatile. The last disadvantage for the business is a uh, cryptocurrency is uh, actually a lack of trust and not backed by bank or the governments. Like I say, the governments that cannot control the non money supply. For example, if uh during the COVID nineteen, you know, uh in China, not only not only in China, I, in Malaysia, and Indonesia, all the governments they are performing the same things. If the economy going down, they will try to supply more money inside the markets. So they will want to stimulate the the economy. So if you are using the cryptocurrency, if the government cannot control the money supply, how much the cryptocurrency must be put in into the markets? So it means that the government cannot control the inflation. So the inflation will be truly based on the fluctuation, price fluctuation of the cryptocurrency. And then the government also cannot stimulate the economy. So these four are the main major disadvantages for the digital business. Just so you can see some of the very good benefit for business. Yes, it's, cryptocurrency is really good for business. In, in low cost, you know, you can replace the bank and then you can have a very good instant payment. But at the same time, from the government perspective, there are some of the privacy, some of the risks for the government if they cannot control the cryptocurrency themselves. So what are the factors that actually cause the cryptocurrency to be volatile in the business? Like I said just now, the cryptocurrency actually influenced by the supply and demand. It means that if the, there is higher demand, the price of the cryptocurrency will be higher. For example, just now the Bitcoin. Why after COVID-19, the Bitcoin price is going up so fast? Because during the COVID-19, a lot of people, they don't want to have the physical money. They don't want to have a close contact with other people. So that's why they use the digital money more offers and then the Bitcoin actually provide them an alternative methods to make payment. So the demand is higher, so that's why the price is higher. The government regulation can also be one of the factors that cause the cryptocurrency to be volatile. Uh, for example, if uh, during the ban in China, so the demand in China is actually decreasing a lot, so it's almost dead there. So the cryptocurrency or the price will drop. Uh, the rejection or discourage the use of the cryptocurrency. Uh, for example, in the Malaysian governments, they will also cause the price to drop. And then uh, the new e-wallets issued by the governments. Uh, for example, in, in Malaysia and also in China, we have a lot of the so-called the bank themselves that introduce uh, e-wallets. That means that you are using your bank account. It's, it's acting like a cryptocurrency, but it is using your own real money. This, they, they have been kept in the bank. So, for example, if your bank has a 10,000, so your e wallets you also have a 10,000. So, you can use the e wallets to pay the money other than going through the cryptocurrency, which is not controlled and which is not managed by the bank and the government. Cryptocurrency volatility can be also caused by the investor and the user sentiments. Uh, for example, mining of the cryptocurrency, if there are more people who involve in the mining, then definitely the demand is higher, the price is higher. And however, a lot of people are also using the cryptocurrency to earn the fast money. Uh, like just now I, I explained, some of them are used for the speculative trading. So then are uh, used for the scam. This one is uh, for the illegal side to use for the cryptocurrency. And then some, the other factor will be the media hype. So this example is actually for the Tesla motor. The Elon Musk is uh, so-called currently world number one richest man in the world. 
he actually is the owner of the Tesla Motor. So in the, in the United States, he actually announced that he allowed the, the use of the Dogecoin, one, one, of the, one type of the cryptocurrency that looked like this. Uh, it actually copied from uh, one meme. So you can see it's really cartoons. It's like a very Instagram, very Facebook kind of the cartoon data. So this one, they call it as a Dogecoin. So Elon Musk actually said that if you want to buy a Tesla car, he is actually accepting the Dogecoin. So immediately the next day, the price of the Dogecoin is increased a few hundreds to a few thousand percentage. So this also can cause the price of cryptocurrency to go up. So sometimes the media boost also can cause the cryptocurrency to price to go up because uh, when a lot of media, they're saying that you can get a better and a higher return compared to the you buying share or you buying a loan in the stock markets. So a lot of people and a lot of media, they claiming that you know, cryptocurrency is a better investment choice. So it will also cause the demand to be higher. So for the conclusions, I would say cryptocurrency is really is a high risk currency compared to the flex money. Uh, if compared to our paper money and coin money. However, there are some issues such as the price volatile, a lack of trust, and not backed by governments, and has also caused its doubt in the sustainability. So the main thing is uh, whether can the cryptocurrency replace our traditions money? Can it replace our paper money? Can it replace our coin money? So there are some issues that they have need to be solved in order to make sure that cryptocurrency is still sustained for the business. And the cryptocurrency can be the alternative method of payment for the business, but maybe not today, uh, but maybe not replacing the fiat money in near future. So if the cryptocurrency, they want to have a good replacement to our traditional monies, you know, paper money and the coin money, there are some issues that are being faced by the cryptocurrency that need to be solved first in order to fully replace our fiat currency. So that's all for my uh, lecture today. So I will walk through to you again as talk today. So which one you actually prefer? You, are you preferring the cryptocurrency or you, you are preferring the fiat money? So there are some of the history of the having a cryptocurrency. The cryptocurrency was founded after the supply crisis in 28, you know, founded by the persons or group of persons we call it as a Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, which until now we cannot show whether this is an individual or a group of people. So the purpose of having the cryptocurrency is to decentralize the money, not being controlled by the bank. Because in 2008, the, during the supply crisis, the Lehman Brothers, the investment bank actually failed the investor. So a lot of people feeling that the bank is not the right choice, is, it cannot be trusted. So a lot of people, they will choose decentralize of the money. So that's why cryptocurrency is being born. So there are some of the differences between the fiat money and the cryptocurrency. The main big difference is that fiat money is your own physical paper and the coin money, where the cryptocurrency is the digital money. So there are some types of the cryptocurrency. The main one is still being dominated by the Bitcoin. Uh, those coins is slowly climbing up. And then the second one, the second largest one will be the Litecoin and the Ethereum. So uh, I would say Bitcoin actually dominated the market so like more than 90% of the cryptocurrency. Then the rest are still very, very small compared to Bitcoin. So which country actually use the most of the cryptocurrency? Surprisingly, Vietnam, India and Pakistan, they use a lot of the cryptocurrency. Uh, also, maybe due to the issue that they don't really trust their own government and they don't trust their bank. That's why they prefer to have a cryptocurrency. And then how the cryptocurrency actually perform? We can see that uh, returns of cryptocurrency is very high compared to the stock markets over the years. And then it is especially climbing up, you know, up the price of the Bitcoin after the COVID-19. So how the Bitcoin can be used in the digital business? Uh, just now we show the example for this one, how we can buy the food from the man owner and using the Bitcoin payments. It actually through a blockchain technology that make you to have the transaction go through the private key rather than go through your own bank. So if actually decrease the step from four step going through the bank to the two step going through your phone. So it's very easy, fast and convenient. So the benefit is that the most important thing is a uh, lower cost and then no restrictions on the payment and the uh, payment is considered an instant and then it allows the digital business to attract new customers. So the, the advantage for the business is that cryptocurrency can be volatile. 
the money that you earn today may not equal to the money that you earn tomorrow. For example, if you are earning, uh, let's say, 1 million rupiah today, maybe tomorrow, because due to the price drop in the Bitcoin, your 1, one rupiah uh, Bitcoin will, will decrease to, to 0 0.5. So this can be a very disadvantage as well. And you're also facing with the cyber security risk. Uh, Bank, but in bank in the China are not being accepted in many businesses, and then it's not backed up by the bank and the government, so that the bank and government they cannot control the money. So the factor of being causes the volatility is a government's regulation, demand and supply, investor uh sentiments, and also the media hype, especially the Tesla model, one of the very good example and sample of how the Dogecoin that can increase their price immediately just over the night because of the announcement of the Tesla model. So in the conclusion, the Bitcoin can, can the cryptocurrency can actually be an alternative to our paper money. Yes, it is good for the business, to be honest. It is, it is provide a lot of the alternative options. So other than using paper money, you can now use your cryptocurrency to buy a lot of things. But the problem is that the price of the cryptocurrency are volatiles are not backed by the governments. And sometimes there are a lot of people that are using the cryptocurrency for other illegal usage so that some of the business uh, in Malaysia, um, in Indonesia, and in India may not be really acceptable. So it can be replaced, but maybe not now, maybe in the future. So is there any Q&A? Do you have any Q&A you want to ask? Any questions from the floor? Okay, if everyone have a question, you can write it on the um on the chat session or you can um ask uh directly to Mr. Olkolawang by opening your mic. Is there any question or Mr. Taufik Akbar has I a question? So I saw a question there. My name is uh Elvira. So I want to ask about what is cryptocurrency can break down the dominance and the sorry hegemonies of the traditional financial institute they have grown. Yes, yeah. Oh, I think you're asking, uh, is it possible that, you know, cryptocurrency like Bitcoin that can break down the financial institutions? Uh, for right now, for uh, until as far as I know, for the current situation, it's still very far from breaking down. Like for example, in the China, why did the China government, they start to ban the cryptocurrency? because they want to maintain the sustainability of the bank themselves. I think uh, this situation is also happening in the Malaysia because you know, every government in the world, they want to protect their financial institution because this is the fundamental of the economy. So I believe that the cryptocurrency is very hard to break down the financial institution, even in the United States themselves, is still not replaceable. Maybe not in these 10 years, maybe we can see in a longer time. So. But right now, it's still very far to achieve the status. Any more questions from the floor? Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Maybe I will take over this Q&A session. And um, okay, maybe the student that you want to ask with uh, Dr. Uh, Oi, you can uh, directly ask to, to uh, the Zoom or maybe write down into the chat box, like I said. And uh, anyone, maybe? Uh, um, I actually have a question, sir. Ah, okay, 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 Sabrina, yeah, please. Okay. Can ask the question. So, uh, based on Mr. Oikolong, um, explain us that um the price uh I, I, we can just say the price of the cryptocurrency is um affected by the supply and demand, and what my answer mm -hmm. uh, my question is is the price of a specific cryptocurrency coin, uh, for example, Bitcoin, is also affected by the supply and demand of the other coin, like maybe Doge or Ethereum, or it's just like the supply of the digital supply and demand of Bitcoin that affecting the price of the Bitcoin itself. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I got your question. Maybe the question is the price of the Bitcoin itself is depend on the the other price of the Bitcoin, right? Or maybe uh, uh, one of Bitcoin itself have, has, has, has the price for, 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 uh, for, for example, like uh, the, the Ethereum, for example, uh, the price is uh, 
just for the Ethereum or the price of the Ethereum is also depend on the other uh, crypto currencies like that, Dr. Ong. Yes, I understand that. Uh, let me share the, sorry, let me share, share the screen for a while. Okay, this is your, like your questions, you know, for example, if the Bitcoin can it be affected by the price and supply and demand for the Bitcoins and for, for the Dogecoin. Uh, for current situations, uh, based on some of the scientific study in the Google Scholar, yes, there are some study that shows that the, for example, the Litecoin, the Ethereum, and Dogecoin, they can have a slightly effect on the Bitcoin themselves. But the supply and demand is still the major key that why the price of the Bitcoin can be being fluctuated. For example, the you see the prices. There are many other issues, you know. Some of the issues, the major one you can see from the macroeconomy side of the issues. For example, if the arrival of the COVID-19, they cause a lot of people using the cryptocurrency or the ban in the China, they cause the prices drop down. So this is one type of so, uh, we call it at the macroeconomy business environments. So it is being affected by the macroeconomy themselves. So uh, your questions will be focused on whether the other coins that can affect the, the Bitcoin. So far, I would say that the markets of cryptocurrency is still being dominated by the Bitcoin. So uh, mostly the Bitcoin will mostly you know, affect the other rather than they being affected by the other coins. Uh. But the chances is still yes. Uh. The chances of being affected is still yes. It's still, it's still there's a possibility that they can be affected. But I would say that the major business environment is still the key main factor that can affect the demand and the supply. Yeah, some okay. yeah. Mm. Yeah, some question in the chat box. Yeah, yeah. There are the two questions. The first one from Sub Bill uh, is it possible to lose money when the trading with the cryptocurrencies and how do you prevent it? Yes. I need to share the screen again. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yeah, you actually <laughs> you actually can lose the money, you know, if you look at the graph here, for example. If you are so unlucky, you, know, you buy a Bitcoin day in the mid of the February, so your price is achieving a 60,000 USD per Bitcoin. So if you are buying at this high, so if you see the drop and you are nervous and you are panicked that you're not sure whether the Bitcoin price will go up or you will go down, you sell at this point. So it means that you will lose around 30,000 US dollar. Yes, you actually can, can lose money from trading the Bitcoin. So is Bitcoin is uh, cryptocurrency is very different from the paper money in a coin because in the paper money and the coin you cannot trade it. You can only use this to buy some or good some to exchange for some of the services. But yes, cryptocurrency you can use for trading. And then it's very volatile and again it's it's very risky and you can actually lose money. You know, in 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 answering your question, how to prevent the loss of the money, you know, it's a very tricky question because uh you have to know that. Unlike, you know, I'm giving you some of the example because of the stock market. If you are buying a stock, uh, you are buying a share, it's actually backed by the financial performance of the company. Yes, you have some of the black, but if the company go bank up, uh, let's say the company go bank up and then you will get some of the replacement after the company sell off their assets and their payroll and pay off their liability. However, if in the cryptocurrency, if you lost the money, it means that you are truly lost the money. You cannot get back. You, you, all you can do is just wait for the price to go up and you cannot share that whether the price will go up or down tomorrow. So this is the tricky part of the cryptocurrency. So in terms of how to prevent it, uh, to be honest, it's very difficult because it's based on the market, unless uh, you can predict the market. You, know? you can uh, whether tomorrow market is down, tomorrow market is, is the up and down. I think that nobody can prevent it. Uh, so it can be very difficult. Yeah, yes, yes, I agree with you because maybe uh, the performance of the cryptocurrency, we can uh, make the analogy like the performance of the uh, stock market, right? It's it's not, it, it cannot be, it, it unpredictable. <laughs> it's unpredictable. So mm -hmm. I agree with you that how to prevent it is depend on the strategy between investors that that uh, uh, that they use to, to, to invest in the cryptocurrency itself. <laughs> and Okay, there are some another question from uh, Farhan Shufi. 
uh, as a beginner, if we do the mining of the cryptocurrency using robots, is it safe or not? Or what should we know first? Uh, I think it's it's uh, for the beginners when they want to invest in the cryptocurrency. Yeah, uh, uh, actually, I I just now I'm doing the lecture. I try to avoid the mining because <laughs> I know you guys are very interested in mining. Okay, yeah, mining uh can be. First of all, you have to know, I, like I said, Bitcoin, there is no cost of the Bitcoin. For the cryptocurrency, there is no cost. The only cost is that the mining cost. So let me show you the, the pictures of how it mining actually looks like. So this is how mining actually looks like. You're having lots of the computer there, and then uh, all these so-called the mining machines uh, or the mining robots, uh, they will go up to perform a series of the statistics to generate the private key. So, however, you know, having one Bitcoin to generate in uh to, to generate from the one computer is going to take a few days to, to a few weeks. You know? So the cost of the current cryptocurrency is not only for the machines. The machine is not really expensive, to be honest. Uh it costs around 10, 10 thousand in the or a few thousand in the regular Malaysia. A few thousand is around around few few millions of rupees like this. So it's not really expensive. But then the cost is the electricity. So for example, if your cryptocurrency, your the cost, the cost is actually zero, but the electricity that you spend on generating the Bitcoin is going to be costly. For example, uh, let's say that if you if today the Bitcoin is a one dollar for, for one Bitcoin, and your electricity that you spend for the each Bitcoin maybe is equal to the five five dollars. So that means that if you are generating one Bitcoin using the $5 of the electricity, so the Bitcoin value is only one, one USD. So it means that you are having a negative four. You have a loss in your mining activity. So what are the first thing at the beginner that you need to be very concerned is that uh, the price of the machines, of the mining machines, and then also the price of the electricity. How much you pay for the electricity to generate each Bitcoin? Is it worth to that you buy rather than you buy from the current market? Sometimes the current market that you buy from the other, the Bitcoin price is still cheaper than you go through the mining. So that's why is if you in Malaysia, and in Malaysia it's quite common to having all this coin of the cryptocurrency. Uh, they are renting other people places, you know, to use it illegally stealing the electricity and they run away from the premises so that they, 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 they can escape the electricity bill. So that's why their Bitcoin cost is being decreased. Yeah, yeah. One yeah, thing of course. is the <laughs> techniques of the mining of the cryptocurrency. So whether you or you should or should not involve in the mining it is actually, you need to calculate your, your electricity, uh, is it worth to generate the Bitcoin? And then whether in your area, uh, is there any business that accepting Bitcoin? Because due to the ban in the uh, Malaysian governments, there are not many businesses are using it compared to the few years ago. A few years ago, I would say, you know, uh, if I go to the street, there are 10 shops there, maybe X shop or 9 shop, they are accepting cryptocurrency. But right now, I think only one or even none of shop will accepting it. So you need to bargain you know, the cost and benefits of uh, generating all the cryptocurrency. Okay, okay. So the conclusion is there are so many costs that maybe they have to consider, right, Professor? And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe when we wait another question, I still have the concern with the the emergence of cryptocurrency when we compare with uh, the issue of in, in the environment. Maybe like like you explained before, especially about the consumption of electricity, because uh, yes, yes. yeah, yes, of course, because this is very very uh, uh, important to know that uh, the issue of environment and the emergence of the uh, cryptocurrency maybe is not, not balanced. Like, for example, like I have read the some paper to uh, in, I don't know, I don't remember uh, the, the, the title, but the, the content is they calculate upon the consumption of electricity to uh, legalize the the transaction or verify the transaction in NFT, for example, or Ethereum. It's the mm -hmm. same with the consumption of electricity in one country, so of Ireland. So that's why uh, it's very, very concerning about the environment. So 
I will I will I will ask about your opinion about that, professors, related with the. Uh, we know that the increasing of the cryptocurrency itself it's very increased dramatically. Yeah, when we in case in Indonesia itself, uh, data from the Jakarta Post that I have read that in May to 2021 there are the 6.5 million investor of cryptocurrencies. So that's why uh, it's very and Indonesia itself is very concerned with the. Uh, environment, especially like the climate change or or anything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I will I will ask about, about your your perspective related with this issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how, how about your perspective, mm-hmm. professor, related with the uh, environmental issues and the emergence of of the the uh, cryptocurrency itself? Yeah, cryptocurrency that definitely will consume a lot of electricity and is uh will bring some of the negative impact to our environments. And then yes, uh it can be a very disaster if we go through a very long term of the minings. And even in the Malaysia, there are many cases that involve in all these uh, illegal minings. So our governments and our police are also still targeting they are not only harmful for the environments and they also bring a lot of cost to the other uh, innocent landlords who need to pay all the electricity. So yeah, yeah, I agree that you know the cryptocurrency can actually harmful, bring harmful negative impact to our environments. But again, you know, the operate money, you printing the paper money is still also you, you need you need some of the resources, you need some papers. It's, it's going to be affecting the environment, but not as much as the cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. But the most important thing is, is that you need to balance between the cost and benefit. Because in, in, in this world, it, and in, anything that you generate is still involve the cost. So you need to consider whether is it worth it or not. Does it really worth to have that much of the cryptocurrency in the markets? And then uh, I'm not sure about the current uh, cryptocurrency acceptance rate in the Indonesia. Uh, maybe uh, doctor, you can uh, explain about it in Indonesia. But uh, in China, it's uh, totally banned right now. But there are some uh, businesses that are still working on it. Uh, in Singapore, in Malaysia, uh, the both of the government also not very encouraging. Yes, they allow it, but at the same time, they are not uh, encouraging it to replace the fiat money. So how about the situations in the Indonesia? Uh... Yeah, when I read about the development of the cryptocurrency, especially like the Bitcoin, in the beginning of the Bitcoin in Indonesia itself, it's uh, it's 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 considered illegal. But in 2018, the Ministry of Trade already legalized to trade with the Bitcoin. So I think the start in 2018 when the government of uh, from the Ministry of Trade uh, issued the the rules to legalize the the trade of the Bitcoin itself. Mm, good, I understand. Uh, I think last time our parliaments, our politicians, they also raised this issue, you know, want to legalize the cryptocurrency in the Malaysia. Then after that, our central bank still complain a lot and saying that uh, if they cannot control the cryptocurrency, control the markets. Uh, like for example, like COVID-19, markets are going down, a lot of business failure. So they, the government need to supply more money to stimulate the economy, to make the business survive. So if you are using cryptocurrency, then the central bank actually cannot control over the economy, cannot help the economy, can, cannot supply more money to the markets. So the business will also be uh, facing some of the problems. So that's why after that, our Malaysian government, they put a stop there and same to uh, other Singapore governments, they also put a stop there. So that's why before the COVID-19, yes, there are a lot of countries, they, are, they want to legalize the cryptocurrency. That after the arrival of the COVID-19, some of the country they step back a bit and they think that if they cannot control the economy, so it will be terrible for them to act as the government. So that's why uh, you can see some of the countries they are not really encouraging, but at the same time, they are not totally banned the cryptocurrency. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. Okay, maybe from the another participant that any question about the uh, cryptocurrencies. Okay, there are some question again in the chat box, mm. and I will read from Fiona. Uh, the question is how to overcome uh, the factors that cause cryptocurrency volatility. So I think it's still about the volatility of the cryptocurrency, and uh, how to overcome. 
how to overcome the factors that cause the cryptocurrency volatility. Okay, uh, just now we said that there are four potential factors that can cause the currency, uh, cryptocurrency volatility. The first one is uh, uh, influenced by the supply and demand. So in this way, you can it cannot actually control the supply and the demand. So this one will be based on the macroeconomy factors. Uh, for the government side, you can help the cryptocurrency to stabilize if the governments they put uh, regulations there, you know, formally uh, come up with a law and the regulations to, to control the cryptocurrency or they have the bank, some bank to back up the cryptocurrency or the bank is actually accepting the cryptocurrency to replace the fiat money. Uh, for example, today, if you want to store uh, 1 million rupiah, you don't want to put your paper money there, you, the bank accepting the cryptocurrency. Yes, this is a way for you to control the cryptocurrency volatility. So for the investor and the user sentiment, uh, you can't really do much on this one because this one is based on your aggregate, the aggregate market performance. So it's not only you, there are thousands of people, there are millions of people that are mining right now here. So you cannot control, you cannot ask the person whether the person wants to do the mining or the, the person wants to do. So the, you can only control the government side, you know, asking the bank to accept the cryptocurrency in order to stabilize the, the price volatility in a cryptocurrency. And you can also control the media, you know, uh, asking the media to give a very rational, balanced view of the cryptocurrency so that they don't give a, a, a do a high hop to the investor saying that, you know, Cryptocurrency can be replaced a share or can be used as a tools to earn the fast money in the market so that the, the stability of the cryptocurrency can be maintained over the time so that it can also control the volatility. So for all these four factors, you cannot really control the supply and demand. You cannot control the investor and user sentiments. But what the governments and the, what the media can do is that they can allow their banks to accept the cryptocurrency in order to stabilize the price and also ask the media to give a proper honest view on the cryptocurrency so that you know, a lot of people, they won't just treat the cryptocurrency as a speculative trading. So this is a way you can actually stabilize the cryptocurrency volatility. However, you know, in the real world, you, know, you are asking the bank to accept the cryptocurrency is still a challenge. There are not many countries that are accepting it in the United States, in the UK. Yeah, some of the countries, they are developed countries in the Western country. Some of their banks are accepting cryptocurrency, but not many banks, only a few selected banks. But in Asia, uh, basically, there's no other banks are doing so. And then for the media, uh, a lot of the Western media, you know, uh, for example, the Times, uh, New York, New York Story, New York times there are a lot of the article they they telling you how good is the is a cryptocurrency how how you should invest in the cryptocurrency to earn fast money so this is uh, something they causing a lot of people they go buy and sell very frequently in the cryptocurrency they cause the high volatility so if you can control the government if the government can control the bank or if they you can control the media then yes the cryptocurrency volatility can be maintained over the time Okay, okay. Thank you, Doctor, for the explanations. This is uh, another question again from Fadila Amalia. Mm. This one, I think, is a little bit uh, long question. I saw the case on the internet. If for the case, if we forget the password of our account, then the money in it can be lost. Do we really can't change the password or do something? If we forget, I think it's about the forgetting the password. <laughs> and oh, okay. if we forget the password, <laughs> the money in in the system, it will be lost or not. Uh, for this one, you can actually need to base on which uh, cryptocurrency platform you are using. Uh, for some of the very uh, matches, very, very modern, well accepted one, yes, you can actually uh, change your password and then they can send your password to your emails and then to your phone as well. Uh, However, you know, there are some of the very, very small, not, not, not very famous uh, local, local cryptocurrency platform. Yes, uh, sometimes they, if you lost your password, you cannot retrieve back your information as well. It will go through a very tedious process. So, yeah, so if you, are, you really want to buy, you know, cryptocurrency, you want to, you want to trade your cryptocurrency, you, you are recommended to go to the global 
recognized, you know, especially those cryptocurrency companies, uh, the platform are being recognized by the governments themselves. I mean, uh, in Malaysia, in Singapore, we have a list of the recognized government recognized cryptocurrency traders. So only the financial institute, they have the platform that are being recognized by the governments, they will be inside the list one. So if it is, it, it, at the same time, it's protecting the consumer, it's protecting the users to have their cryptocurrency in this platform. But I'm not sure whether uh, Indonesia is having this practice or not. But if you really want to trade your cryptocurrency, it's, it's recommended you find a, a nice platform. It is better to be supported by any other governments, especially the central bank. Okay. So is it possible to, to change the passport? Right? Yeah, yeah, and, it's still possible. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, maybe uh, when I'm still wait for another question from the participant here, uh, or maybe I will call Pak Radian, maybe. You have the views regarding this issue about the cryptocurrency. Pak Radian, Mr. Radian. Okay, maybe we will still wait. Uh, maybe I have another. Oh yeah, yeah this is Paradian. Uh, you have the question, Paradian, maybe about your views about the emergence of the cryptocurrency, so we can discuss here. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Doctor Oi, for your your explanation about cryptocurrency here. So, according to your opinion at the moment, as a, as a student here, uh, is it is it a good is it a good process or I mean, is it a good investment for them if they are doing or they purchasing the cryptocurrency? Is it a good investment for them to, I mean, is it good, good for them to learn how to invest their money in a cryptocurrency? Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you, yeah. thank you, Paul, for, uh, Ryan. Uh, in terms of your questions, whether is it suitable for a student to invest in a cryptocurrency? Yeah. Uh, let me show you the screen. Okay, you can see that there are actually a lot. Of... There are many types of cryptocurrency in the markets. Uh, so uh, the main one is definitely the Bitcoin, but currently the Bitcoin price is at like 67,000 USD per one Bitcoin. So well, it, it can be very, very expensive for a student. So I would say that if you want to have the experience of a cryptocurrency, maybe you aim for other types of a cryptocurrency. There are so many types here uh, with a lower price line. So you can experience how the cryptocurrency that actually work. But uh, if you are selecting Bitcoin, then the cost of having the Bitcoin as a student, I, I'm not sure of financial performance, how is it, but uh, the cost is quite uh, high, you know, if you are choosing Bitcoin. Maybe you can choose for other coins which is a cheaper price so that you can uh, have the experience of the trading the cryptocurrency in the markets. But the most important thing is that you want to make sure that your local business, they are accepting the cryptocurrency so that if you want to buy something, you also can spend the money to, to use the cryptocurrency as well. So whether is it, is it worth for the student to try? Uh, I would say it's a very good experience if you have the financials, uh, you have no financial issue to try that, it shouldn't be a problem, but uh, I think not Bitcoin, because it's not recommended, it's too high right now for the price, you want to pay 67 US dollar to trade a Bitcoin can be very expensive for you. So maybe you can try other cryptocurrency as well. There are a lot of the other new cryptocurrency that's still in a lower price. You can learn how to have the trading experience. Okay, that's nice. Is it uh, quite risky or not for, for the student if they want to try to invest their money for the cryptocurrency? How about the risk? The risk is definitely higher, you know, compared, compared to the share, compared to the, to the fund, compared to the bond. Uh, cryptocurrency is definitely on the higher side because the price is a volatile. But uh, as you can see that the price is now is going up. Uh, so... If you want to trade, firstly, you have to ensure that you have uh, 67,000 to buy one Bitcoin first. So that uh, this one is in the USD. So you make sure that you are rich enough to buy the Bitcoin before you, you do the investment. 
And then for the risk, yes, it is quite risky compared to the share and compared to the bond. And in fact, that if you are buying share, you can buy a smaller lot. So the the financial the financial obligation is not that high compared to the cryptocurrency. Where our cryptocurrency is having a higher financial obligation, the risk also higher. But uh, you know, sometimes in finance we always say that a higher risk is means a higher return. So that's why you can see the returns of the Bitcoin is that high because it is a higher risk currency. Yes, the risk is higher, but if you have the experience, and then why not you can go and try it? Yeah, shouldn't shouldn't be a problem for you just to try it for the experience. But it's not recommended for you, you know, to buy a one hundred coin, you know, two hundred, few hundred, few thousand coins. Not recommended. <laughs> Maybe one, yeah. you want to you buy one or two coin, you know, sufficient enough already. Now it's for what topic? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> he can he can afford this. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You are right. It's it's too risky to buy so many coins, <laughs> and um, because like you said, it's very. Uh, fluctuative in 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 its price. Uh, okay, maybe uh, I only thought I have the question related with the Paratian about the uh, like the behavior of the investor of uh, uh, cryptocurrency. Yeah, mm -hmm. I will I will pick the example like in Indonesia. Like I said that that uh, uh, from the data that uh, the investor of uh, cryptocurrency by May two thousand twenty one is uh, 6.5 and this number is surpassed the number of investor in capital market okay <laughs> and i think i think it's very very interesting but uh sometimes i just look the the behaviors of the investor itself because most of them is is the youngers is is mm. the, is the millennials is the gen z and so that's why uh most of them is okay they know about the consideration about the risks about anything, but in the other side, I just I also see like they all there's something like just following the trend. <laughs> they they following the trend, yeah. so maybe maybe they don't know about I don't know they they consider about the risk or not. So I think it's very uh, very danger when they invest. They not consider about the the risk about the maybe just like uh, the uh, example. In maybe uh, a couple months ago, and uh, maybe last year, or so, I don't know, I don't remember. There are some cases that there are people the post photo in NFT. They got uh, the high price of the photo, <laughs> mm -hmm. so uh, they know if, if when 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 this case when they say when the piece, the, the 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 news of the these people is spread in in this country and. People, yeah, like try to invest in, in NFT, have to use in NFT. But I still just thinking that, oh, okay, they 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 just follow the trend, and uh, because uh, in in couple of months later, they uh, suffer loss, and yeah, it's okay, it's done. <laughs> It's done. So, so the behavior of investor like this one, maybe like in, in Indonesia, uh, maybe I just think that it's still, uh, like I said, it's still the following the trend, not not consider upon the, uh, not not to consider upon the risk or something. And I just want to know what your 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 thought about this 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 maybe this example this event in, in Indonesia. <laughs> So I think it's, it's, it's right that, you know, younger generations, like uh, a lot of people, especially the younger students, they, they will like to accept all this cryptocurrency. The first thing you have to know is that we, they are born very differently from our, our, our generations. So our generation, we just still prefer the paper money with the coin money, you know, the especially our elder, our grandfather, grandmother, you know, they like to have all this kind of the money and then they pack in one pack and then, and then store under their bed or they saw under their, their team or coin there. So, uh, but with the younger generations, the acceptance level of the cryptocurrency, especially the on online things are very common. Like, you know, for the younger generation, why they like to have the Facebook, you know, why they like to have the Instagram. In fact, the you, you end up, you and why you're so having, <coughs> having a, a Instagram there. So you can see there are a lot of younger <coughs> generation who, who are accepting the new technologies. 
So actually for them to adapt to the cryptocurrency, it shouldn't be a problem. Yes, they definitely will slowly move to the cryptocurrency side for the digital marketing or uh, digital business. So uh, that's where you can see that why the governments, you know, they are trying to launch uh, or asking the bank to launch the so-called uh, e-wallet in the Malaysia in Singapore. Why we are practicing this? Because uh, cryptocurrency is not being backed by the bank and the governments. So if you are using the so-called e-wallets, which are very frequent, very similar to the cryptocurrency, but controlled by the bank themselves, but using your real money inside your bank account. Okay. So, so this is uh, why the government, they want to launch all this. Uh, because they also know that your younger generation, definitely they will more likely to accept the cryptocurrency. And then why they don't want to touch on the share? Because if you want to buy a share, you need to perform a lot of financial analysis. You want to know that whether the company is doing well, whether the company is performing or not. But however, if the cryptocurrency, they are not backed by any of the company, you, you don't need to worry, you don't need to study, you know, whether it is the uh, is the right time, whether it is a good investment, whether how, for example, in, in Indonesia's markets, there are thousands of the listed companies there. You need to select uh, only one or three companies out of a few thousand companies. So it can be very tedious work. And then a lot of younger generation, they don't like to spend their, their time to do all the financial analysis. They don't like to study the annual report. You need to do a lot of the performances to make sure that you are selecting a good company to invest. But however, cryptocurrency, they actually offer you a different perspective. You know, you don't need to study all this. You, all you need to do is that you have the money, you go and buy the Bitcoin. Or you have the money, you go to buy the mining machines to, to get the Bitcoin yourself. So it's a very different experience already. For the younger generation, definitely they are having a very great acceptance. But whether the government they want to interface to control the younger generation is a uh, another issue. Uh. But I think in most countries they are trying to you know, uh, coping with the cryptocurrency. They are not trying to, how to say, and uh, they are not trying to wipe off the cryptocurrency, but they are trying to minimize it. Uh. But they also understand that the younger generation they are accepting it, so it shouldn't be a problem, you know, for them to. To have a higher acceptance because they're born in this uh new era. That's why we call it as a new era of business. Their generations and our generations are can be very different. Now everyone is talking about digital business. A lot of things are moving online already since COVID nineteen. So you can see why the demands of cryptocurrency is being higher because a lot of things moving online. And then uh with the movement order ban during the COVID nineteen, you cannot come up from your house. You, know, you cannot go very far away from your hometown. So that that's why when everything moves online, the demands of cryptocurrency is definitely higher. So I would say that it is uh in a wider world, it cannot be prevented that you know younger generation they like to have a cryptocurrency. Uh because compared to the stock, compared to the bond, you need to spend a lot of time on investing on this one. And then well, cryptocurrency, you don't need. But however, the risk is there when you no need to study all these things, uh, the risk of being your loss of investment is uh, definitely higher, higher in the cryptocurrency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Maybe the key, the key investment here is we have to diversify, right? Mm. I think we have to diversify. We cannot maybe rely on okay Bitcoin, but uh, we can also maybe diversify our money in another assets like shares or maybe bond. Okay, this is uh, the question from uh, Anissa. Uh, there are question in in the chat box and. The question is, what are the disadvantages of the using cryptocurrency and how to minimize these losses? I think it's a little bit the same with the previous question. Yeah, uh, I will explain a bit. Okay. Uh, so just now we have said about the disadvantages of the cryptocurrency. So I would say that the best way to cope with all these disadvantages is very easy, very simple. You ask the government or you ask the bank to back up the cryptocurrency. So, for example, if right now, uh, uh, I mean, the let's say the Bank of Indonesia, maybe the Bank of Indonesia is not accepting the cryptocurrency. So, if the Indonesia government today suddenly announced, you know, the Bank of Indonesia, they are starting to accept the cryptocurrency. Yeah, then the cryptocurrency will be the alternative uh, types of the currency compared to your paper money, compared to your coins already. So, 
yes, you can actually avoid all the losses if your cryptocurrency is being backed by the government and being backed by the bank. So all you need to wait is just, you know, when the price is going down, all you need to wait is just wait for the price to go up because if the cryptocurrency is being backed by the government, backed by the bank, so you shouldn't be worried too much because if anything happens, so the government and the bank, they will still compensate you. But right now, the problems, the main major problem of the cryptocurrency is that it doesn't back by any governments or it doesn't back by any of the banks. So if you lost your money, that means you are lost to the market. So the bank, the government, they won't come out and they won't compensate you as well. So that's the, that's the problem of the cryptocurrency. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Oi, for the explanation. I think it's very insightful our discussion today. And unfortunately, because maybe we have the limited of the time, the question from Anissa will become the last question. Uh, so uh, uh, before I close, uh, once again, I will uh, say thank you very much and I will back the event to, to Sabrina. Okay, so thank you, Mr. Oikolong for the, your time and the knowledge that you shared to us. And also I would like to so thank Mr. Taufik, uh, thank you for being our moderator today. Maybe because, but before we close, before I close uh, this event today, I want to give a little conclusion that cryptocurrency is the digital currency, which right now has big influence in the world of finance, including the business world because of the benefits that it gives, like the cost reduction, the almost zero percent fees, no restriction on payment and other benefits, but it's still a high risk on currency uh, compared to the fiat currency, but it can be an alternative of the payment in the business world, but may not be replaced the fiat currency in the near future. Okay, so uh, before I close this event, uh, maybe I would like to ask um, Mr. Oiklong if, if whether you have any social media or Instagram account, maybe so that we can still keep in touch in the future. Yeah, sure. Uh, I will put my LinkedIn account in the comments. So if anything, you can you can let me know. I will put it in the comment sections and my phone number. So if you got any questions, you also can can WhatsApp me or email me. So I put my okay. email as well. So for today's session, I will say that the conclusion is that. The cryptocurrency is definitely one of the alternative, one of the very good uh, types of the currency that can replace the paper money and the coin. But uh, there are some of the issues like the price fluctuations, you know, the government supports, all these need to be addressed uh, before it can be widely accepted by the public. It is safe for the public as well. So there are a lot of issues to overcome in order for the cryptocurrency to be accepted by the, not only in the Indonesia, but also by by other other country as well. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, finally, we come to the end of this event. Uh, and for all the other participants, thank you for attending our event today. And don't forget to follow our Instagram account at Um, And then before we close, let, let us reciting Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, okay. Before we close it, uh, we would like everyone to open the camera because we want to have a, a photo session. Please, you can turn on the camera, all the participants. All right, well, everyone, thank you very much for your coming and your nice attention. Uh, thank you, Mr. Erkalang and Mr. Taufik Akbar. See you in the next guest lecture. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Thank, thank you so much. <laughs>
change is a sure thing. No one can resist the change that will happen. Change takes place in all lines of human life without exception. Today, changes in the business world take place very quickly, especially since the COVID-19 pandemic has triggered rapid technological developments and has changed business concept in almost all industries. Responding to these challenges, IMAPS FEB UMY prepares its graduates to have qualified managerial skills and be able to adapt to all changes ranging from a national scale to an international scale. In addition, IMAPS FEB UMY graduates will also be equipped with entrepreneurial skills where later IMAPS FEB UMY alumni will not only be able to meet the needs of employment opportunities, but also open new jobs. This is in accordance with UMY vision to become the leading entrepreneur university in 2030, entrepreneurial university in 2035, and become sociopreneurial university in 2040. Welcome to International Program of Management and Business, IMAPS FEB UMY. This international program was established in 2016. IMAPS FEB UMY was established under the Management Study Program, Faculty of Economics and Business, Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta, an excellent and Islamic campus. Until now, our study program has received superior accreditation from Ban PT and has been certified by the Asian University Network Quality Assurance. International Program of Management and Business, Faculty of Economics, Mutas Mamadiyah, Yogyakarta, is a leading management and business program in Indonesia. The program has a curriculum and the education process which to create, to produce graduates which is competitive not only nationally but also internationally. The program gives the opportunity for students to have the exchange students to many countries that they want Malaysia, Thailand, Taiwan, South Korea, Japan, Turkey, Spain and other European countries that the student likes. This gives the student with the international, international exposure and that will give the competitive advantage for the student so that they are very competitive when they graduate. The graduate of this program has got a job in many areas, in multinational companies, government agencies, and also as entrepreneurs. I really encourage you to join this program for your bright future. Good luck! The aim of the International Program of Management and Business is to provide managerial competence and technology-based entrepreneurship at an international level. To achieve this goal, IMAPS FEB UMG is committed to becoming the center of excellence in management by practicing the five values in IMAPS, namely I. Innovative Focus on talent and competence development, which provides flexibility to innovate fast. Mature Create a learning environment, which consists of practical and hands-on content. Adaptive Equip the student with proper knowledge in achieving the associated result from the disruptive change. Balance Generate a well-defined capability to integrate soft skill and hard skill competence. Synergy Minimize the gap between what academic over and what industry needs by continuously interacting with industry. Our vision is to become a reputable undergraduate program in Southwest Asia in 2025 in the field of management and entrepreneurship based on faith, devotion, science, and technology. In order to create graduates with a global perspective, IMAPS FEB UMY has also collaborated with various universities from several countries, such as New Zealand, Australia, UK, China, Japan, Malaysia, Spain, Taiwan, Thailand, and Turkey. IMAPS FEB UMY has several excellence programs, such as First, English Incentive Course. The purpose of the English course is to improve the student's English language skill, especially to improve the student's TOEFL score. 
This course is given to students semester 1 to semester 4. In order to ensure the quality of English language learning, IMAPS already has MOU with a credible English language education institution. Second, Overseas Fieldwork Lecture KKL Abroad and carry out by cooperating with industry partner abroad. Through this program, students will be invited to visit and watch the company's business process. Third, Internship Overseas to increase students' ability, IMAPS has also developed internship program with various companies abroad. All of these activities are designed to produce excellent individuals with hard skill and soft skill who can compete on international level. Fourth, student exchange. IMAPS students will have the opportunity to carry out credit transfer or student exchange programs to several universities that have collaborated with IMAPS FEBUMY from various countries such as Malaysia, Thailand, Taiwan, China, Korea, Turkey, Spain. In addition, IMAPS has also accepted several students from Congo, Gambia, Palestine, and United Arab Emirates as full-time students at IMAPS. Fifth, International Conference Delegation. Sixth, Foreign and Domestic Lecturer Guest Lecture. Another activity conducted at IMAPS is to invite visiting professors from various countries. IMAPS also invites practitioners from various fields to provide provision for both hard skill and soft skill for IMAPS students. Another program launched by IMAPS is the Summer School, which over a variety of course that not only study about the material but also directly practice with practitioner. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain amma ba'du. Welcome to the International Program of Management and Business, Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. This program is part of Management Department, Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. The vision for this program is to educate, to empower, and to enrich students with the international network based on Islamic and local wisdom. In order to implement those vision, we are doing several activities such as doing a visiting professor, summer school, student exchange, and also internship overseas. Those activities will be helpful for students to combine their ability to combine their hard skill and also soft skill. So, by joining IMAPS, you will be able to combine your hard skill and soft skill. So, please come and see and join IMAPS. Thank you. Bilahi Taufiq Wadiah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Supported by professional lecturers and have a scientific capacity that is up to date in accordance with the current development of the industry. So, it's no wonder there are so many achievements that IMAP students get in the national or international regional level. IMAP students are prepared to become graduates who excel in the fields of managership and entrepreneurship to see existing business opportunities. IMAP's UMBA, the center of excellence in management.